What is up everybody? It is me Devil Never Cry and today we're going to be going over a basic guide for Virgil's Beowulf. We're going to be going over what it does and how to use it and what to look out for as a player. So to start things off you can see here that Beowulf is essentially a demonic pair of gauntlets and greaves. Virgil here as you can see is dancing lightly on his toes getting ready to dish out some absolute mayhem. So let's go over its moveset first. Virgil has two standard basic ground combos. You've got a simple one, which if you mash out the triangle button or the melee button, uh, ends in a roundhouse. I believe it's three actual melee presses that you need. One, two, three. And then the second one is two hits and a delay, followed by two more hits. So you've got one, two, delay, and it finishes off in a straight. Not too bad, but we can do better. The main sort of luxury of Beowulf is the fact that it can dish out a substantial amount of damage due to the charge mechanic system, whatever you want to call it. Simply put, if you press and hold, you can charge up the hits. You can do it at any point in a combo, charge up the final hit here. And what's cool about this is that Beowulf has three levels of charge, uh, with the third one being tied to a full concentration bar or full motivation bar as everyone knows it. So for example here, that is a level 1 charge, we'll show off a level 2 charge here, and this is a level 3 charge. As you can see, whenever you pull off a higher tier of charge, you'll tend to get more atmospheric effects, a bigger impact, more hit stun, and even the ground will sometimes crack. You can tell when you've charged up sufficiently because your whatever limb you're attacking with will flash in correlation to the level of charge. Now what's cool about this is that the charge system can actually impact the moves of animations. For example, we've got a standard uppercut here with no charge. If we charge up to a level 1, Virgil follows him up with a Shoryuken. We've got a level 2 here, which is more like a Shoryuepa which launches them pretty high, and then we've got a level 3 charge, which is the highest of them all, and which no doubt you've seen people do uh, against bosses here. Now, what's cool about the move, other than the fact that it looks cool and is flashy, is the fact that it does a substantial amount of damage. That move destroyed bosses in DMC4 Special Edition and does the same here in DMC5, though not to the same extent because you can't distort your moves. Now, one of the main drawbacks of charging is the fact that it takes a substantial amount of time. You are left open to attack. There's a few things we can do to negate this opening, shall we say, in Virgil's defense. So, whilst you're charging, you can simply mash out the summoned swords. Um, you know, there's no meter involved at all. You can just mash to your heart's content. And if you if you hit them with enough summoned swords, you'll you'll cause them to flinch. Now, this might not work for some of the enemies simply because they've got their own hyper armor. So, we use the uh, the heavy rain of swords to essentially freeze enemies in place. And what that does is it freezes enemies in a suspended state of slow-mo, allowing you to get off uh, a full charge. You can even do a few cool combos here, which we can freeze them in the air. You know, things like that, essentially. That is one of the mainstays. Uh, you'll see that in a lot of no damage uh, boss videos where they simply freeze the enemy and allow them to go on to do whatever they wanted to do. But that is one of the key things when it comes to Bale and dishing out a lot of damage. One of the other moves you'll probably see quite often is the Lunar Phase. This is simply done by locking on, holding forward, and pressing the triangle button. Now, when I say forward, I don't necessarily mean up on the controller, I mean forward relative to whatever direction Virgil is facing here. Virgil here is standing off to the right, so forward to him would be the left. That is a lunar phase right there. The funnel hit causes a ground bounce. You can even do this in mid-air, if you should so please. And this is one of the moves that, however, you cannot charge, unfortunately. Um, what you can do, though, is you can essentially teleport out of it and you can just repeat ad nauseum, never having to do the final hit. Especially if you've got an enemy in air, this is fairly vital. If you've got an enemy that likes to fly, this move will, uh, will serve you well. Next up on Virgil's repertoire is 
the Kick 13. This is a move that has returned from the original Devil May Cry. It was a move that Dante could do with Ifrit. It returned in DMC 4 Special Edition, uh, but it was tied to uh, a different input. This time, Kick 13 is a back forward input, uh, holding a lock on and then pressing the melee button. And it simply has Virgil attack the enemies with a flurry of kicks. Why kick 13? I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure what, what's, uh, what 13 has to do with it, but nonetheless, it is a cool move. What's even cooler is that you can pair this with a Rising Sun, provided you hold the melee input whenever you do the kick 13. And that allows you to go off into the air and allows you to do all sorts of shenanigans, should you please. So now that we've covered Virgil's repertoire on the ground with Beowulf, with his standard combos, his Kick 13, his Rising Sun, his Lunar Phase, and his Beast Uppercut or Rising Dragon, depending on uh, how long you charge it, let's cover what he can do in midair. So as I said, he can already do the Lunar Phase in midair. He's also got the standard dive kick, known as the Starfall or the Killer Bee in Dante's repertoire, which, if you have it upgraded to level 2, will end with Virgil throwing the enemy around. Now, of course, what's cool about this is that you can, of course, jump cancel it to your heart's content. You have to be in the correct sort of state relative to the enemy, so you have to be above them if you want to charge multiple ones. Um, if you're too far underneath them, you won't be able to, to jump cancel eventually, you'll just jump, you won't jump cancel and you'll fall directly below them. And then we have the flush ability here. As you can see, I'm simply just hitting the enemy here by jumping. It's as if Virgil's entire body has become a weapon. Now this might not seem all too interesting at first until you decide to mess around with the parries. So as you can see there, using the flush mechanic, we can easily parry enemies with the simple press of the jump button. You can jump forwards, you can jump up, you can jump back. And what's cool about this is that the jump also has iframes in it. So even if you were to miss the parry, hopefully the iframes in the jump would protect you from receiving damage. And so that concludes what Virgil can do with Beowulf on the ground and in midair. Next up, I want to cover Sin Devil Trigger. So I mentioned previously in another video that Sin Devil Trigger, or SDT as it's known, can modify certain moves. So it's no surprise that with Virgil, some of his Beowulf combos become altered here. So let's take a look at the standard combo with Beowulf on the ground, the combo A. As you can see there, Virgil finishes this combo with a bit of a roundhouse, which tends to have pretty amazing reach, as you can see there. It's got a very wide hitbox, and to be honest, it's just awesome to look at. Next up, let's take a look at Beowulf combo B, the one with the delay in the middle. After the dodge punch, the one where he dashes back and then goes straight into the straight punch, Virgil finishes it off with a shoulder pop, also known as a Tetsuzanko. And last but not least, I want to briefly go over Hell on Earth. This is Virgil's super move with Beowulf. It's the one that, again, you've seen many people use to destroy bosses, uh, and it's quite a sight to behold. So, to perform the Hell on Earth with Beowulf, you have to either be in Sin Devil Trigger, or you have to be out of Sin Devil Trigger but have a full SDT bar and at least a level 2 concentration. And then if you lock on, press forward and the melee and trick button at the same time. So for me that would be triangle and circle. Virgil will charge up a nuclear explosion held within his fist, letting it fly and sending enemies flying. Sending even bosses flying if you can believe it. And so that concludes the video on Beowulf, so mess around, check out what Beowulf is capable of in the Void Mode. Don't forget to freeze enemies to charge up those attacks, and of course, stay motivated. 
If you like the video, do be sure to leave a like and of course subscribe to stay up to date with anything and everything in Devil May Cry and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out when new content drops. Let me know down in the comments below what else you'd like me to cover with Virgil and with all that said and done, it has been me, Devil Never Cry. I would like to thank all of you for watching and as always, I'll see you all next video.